great. <laughs> Love the excitement already in the room. Well, first of all, please allow me to officially welcome you to the to a Bayer Foundation Science Award 2020. But uh, instead of me opening, I would like to invite Monica Leso, who is joining us online, to give an official opening remark. Monica, please. Thanks a lot, Serena. Dear guests, dear colleagues, dear award winners, and members of the Board of Trustees. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this year's Bayer Foundation Science Award Ceremony. And of course, I would have loved to be with you in person, but it didn't work out this time, but for sure, I will be there next time. So today, we are coming together to honor six outstanding scientists, an internationally highly acknowledged chemist with the prestigious Otto Bayer Award 2022, and four outstanding young scientists with the Early Excellence in Science Awards in the categories Biology, Chemistry, Medical Science, and Data Science. But this year's ceremony is even more exciting, as for the first time, we are going to honor an exceptional science leader with the Ernst Ludwig Winnecke Award. And you will hear more later about this. So let me take the opportunity to say a warm welcome to Professor Winnaker, our former chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Bayer Foundation, who is with us today in Leverkusen. And I would also like to extend a warm welcome to Professor Patrick Kramer, our current chairman of the Board of Trustees, and to Serena Lin, member of the Board of Management of Bayer and member of the Executive Committee of the Bayer Foundation. The vision of the Bayer Foundation is to advance science and social innovation for a world with health for all and hunger for none. With our programs, we aim to highlight outstanding scientists, enhance the impact of science as basis for societal progress, and empower social innovators as enablers for long-lasting change. In line with our values, Bayer Foundation's science program specifically seeks to advance equity, collaboration, and trust in science. Our awards are a key component of this endeavor. By identifying outstanding leaders and young talents in breakthrough areas of the life sciences, we foster interdisciplinary and cross-border collaboration, which is critical for addressing current challenges we are facing as a society. However, science and technology alone will not be able to provide the solutions we need for sustainable growth. We also take, need to take society with us and build trust in these new technologies. Therefore, as Bayer Foundation, we are not only engaging in early science education in schools, science competitions such as Jugendforscht and youth academies, but also decided, in honor of Professor Winnaker's 80th birthday, to establish a new award the Ernst Ludwig Winnecke Award, to acknowledge scientific leaders who stand up for science, even in difficult times, and who seek dialogue and also create trust. And I'm very excited to have Professor Antje Boetius, director of the Alfred Wegener Institute with us, who will be honored with this award for the first time. Her work will be introduced by Jean Rubner, a well-known science journalist and famous book author, so welcome to both of you and thanks a lot for joining us today. But I'm also very much looking forward to hear more on our winners of the Early Excellence in Science Awards. They were established in 2009 in order to honor young scientists at an early stage of their career. And I'm very proud to say that since 2009, we have honored around 40 young researchers all of which continued to be role models in science and made remarkable careers across the world. With many of them, we are still in touch through our Bayer Foundation Science Network, connecting scientific leaders from academia with science experts from industry. And every year, we also have the pleasure to honor an outstanding researcher from a German-speaking country with the Otto Bayer or Family Hansen, Hansen Award. Today, our awardee is Professor Frank Glorius from the University of Münster, 
who will receive the Otto Bayer Award for his groundbreaking discoveries and developments of catalytic reactions for sustainable synthesis of organic molecules. This is of high value for medical as well as agricultural applications. The list of the 35 Otto Bayer awardees since 1984, including the winner today, and the 12 Family Hansen awardees since 2000, reads like a who is who in chemistry, biology, and medical research. Four of the awardees received in the following years the Nobel Prize. And not long ago, in 2021, Professor Benjamin List at the Max Planck Institute in Mülheim, who was the winner of the Otto Bayer Award in 2012, received the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 2021. So no pressure on you, Professor Frank Lorius, and a warm welcome to you, and we are looking forward to hear more on your work during your lecture. So with this short introduction, I would like to hand over to Serena for her keynote remarks. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Monica, for that introduction. And again, uh, welcome from my side as well. Uh, I can only echo the excitement that Monica shared, really, about the ceremony, the awardees, and the fact that we can host this face-to-face -face in Baycom. I'm sure that you all have experienced what it was like in the last three years of the pandemic, where a lot of the human connection was just so much harder uh, for us to build. So, warm welcome. Um, and let me also extend my warm welcome to Professor Vinica as former chair of the board of the trustees of the Bayer Foundation and Professor Kramer, our current chair for the Bayer Foundation. Personally, I'm very honored here today as a member of the executive committee of the Bayer Foundation and also as representing the board of management of Bayer AG to have this opportunity to celebrate science and really honoring the outstanding scientists that you dedicate to a better life. Bayer, as some of you know, will celebrate 160th of uh, anniversary this year. And many of you know, research and development has always been the core of what we do. We continue to inspire by our vision of health for all, hunger for none. And personally, this is the vision that attracted me to Bayer about two years ago. Now, Two simple numbers to put what we do in perspective. You all recall, how many, what's the population of the world back in 1863 when Bayer was founded? Anybody? Rough guess? It's about a billion. It's about a billion people 160 years ago. And today, as you know, we celebrated eight billion, eight billionth human being that was born to Earth in December last year. And as all the scientists here know, that was not the linear growth, right? So, but I think what's really important for us to keep that in mind is, thanks to the vision of the pioneering scientists that came before us, we have been able to continue to meet the challenges of the growing population. Just to put a few examples in perspective, the invention of nitrogen fixation by Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch paved the way for artificial fertilizer, which still is the bedrock if we think about how we produce food today. Norman Borlaug's contribution to crop science, many of us are very familiar with, who continue to develop the resistant wheat varieties that saved billions of people from starvation until today or Alexander Fleming changed the world of modern science by discovering penicillin that allowed us to continue to build a good work of how do we think about preventive medicine. And same goes true with the groundbreaking research of Frederick Bunting, who discovered insulin and its therapeutic potential. These heroes made a better life for all of us as human beings. And all of us stand on the shoulders of these giants as we continue our work for a better tomorrow. Now, the good news is scientific discovery continues to advance at an astonishing speed 160 years later. Looking at the past two decades, scientists around the world have been able to harness the power of events computing, events biology, events chemistry, and AI and data analytics 
to really celebrate our human's ability to understand and to engineer. Now, from sequencing the human genome back in, what's the year you all know? 2003, right? To the discovery of CRISPR-Cas in 2011, to the first application of the CAR T cells to potentially treat cancer. I think these progress are really driving at astonishing speed that none of us could have imagined 10, 20, 30 years ago. Now, however, I hope you would agree, despite all these advancements, more advancement need to come. More innovation is required because our challenge tomorrow is only going to be greater than what we're facing today. Now, for a research science-based company like Bayer, driving by our one and only purpose of science for better life, now is the time to make the change. Think about cell and gene therapy, our role in feeding the world, biorevolution, and all the potentials to really create big leaps as we continue to push forward. I think we are truly at the dawn of something great, an innovation age of life sciences, if you will. And I think these innovations really come with incredible opportunities for us. Solving what we thought maybe just five or 10 years ago were unsolvable. Curing diseases of what we maybe thought three years ago were uncurable. But to do this right, we truly have to transform how we innovate for better. Now, while this vision is fully supported, and we all agree the confluence of biology, chemistry, technology, and data scientists all provide the opportunity to solve some of these greatest challenges. We also need to acknowledge, acknowledge that the only way for us to address these challenges is that we, as a community of scientists, continue to ask the question of what if. What if we could produce more food with less resources? What if diseases like Parkinson's or cancer weren't just being treated, but they were truly cured? What if underserved communities could take care of their personal health and increase their quality of life significantly what we're able to see today? While these challenges might seem very different in nature, but the means of overcoming them could be surprisingly similar. And it really comes down to advancement in science, specifically advancing in chemistry, biology, technology, and data sciences. And of course, at the cell and gene level, that truly is the bedrock of all life and Earth. Therefore, we are here to honor some exceptional scientists, thank you for joining us, who worked on these spaces and will continue to learn about their scientists and their science research throughout the day. So let me conclude by offering the following three perspectives. First, despite all the opportunities we see in science, we know that science alone is not enough. And we heard Monica mentioning exactly the same point. Because as we've seen in the COVID-19 pandemic, scientific investment also require societal understanding and acceptance. And this is why it is so important that our new Ernst Luke Winnicke Award is created to, cre to really honor the contribution to the dialogue between society and the scientific community. Secondly, we also know that we cannot be pioneers if we don't constantly challenge our speed of innovation. And to seize new opportunities in a rapidly changing world, we have to create an environment where the best brains can thrive and the best collaborations can happen. And this is why internally, we're setting high expectations of how we want our leaders to continue to engage and develop their teams to shape really how to have that scientific discussion and discourse could happen freely and to continue to thrive for performance and drive toward our aspirations. Lastly, we believe that a combination of speed and flexibility, courage and inclusion will create the ecosystem in which breakthrough innovations could happen. Again, we talked about the rapid development of COVID-19. So if success is at that scale is possible, think about what it could do 
if we can bring that kind of speed and innovation to cure diseases like cancer. I'm convinced that this could soon become a reality, in part of what we're trying to do to achieve here at Bayer. So again, let me thank you again for being here with us and giving me this opportunity to share some of the thoughts. So with that, let's transition to our first award ceremony of the day, the Early Excellence in Science Award. But instead of me talking, let's roll the video and see the achievement of these young scientists. The video, please. Early Excellence in Science Award is important for me because my science, specifically computational work of uh, line of science and machine learning in its application in biology is acknowledged, and that makes me happy. Every day is a new challenge because you work with different group of people, group of biologists, clinicians, and also computer scientists, so you see different problems, also similar problems from different perspectives. So my work is related to developing computational algorithms, specifically machine learning algorithms to interpret biological data. We design models that could predict the response of the drugs that haven't been tested in human trials. That means that in computer, we simulate the effect of the drug without really injecting those drugs into people to see the effect of those drugs, the risk of those drugs, and side effects of those drugs. And that's all possible using machine learning. For me, it's important because having always worked in, on fundamental science, uh, it's a recognition of the importance of fundamental science. The aim of our research is to understand how life started, how the first cell arose, and this is not only useful uh, uh, to satisfy our curiosity, but it's also, it could also be useful to understand if there's life on a different planet, uh, if we can rebuild life from the simple ingredients that we have in the lab. Also, if we can modify and modulate living systems that we have right now to solve some of the problems that we have in terms of therapies and so on. Research, fundamental and applied research, are key in order to move forward and discover new pathways, new things, that then can help making the world a better place. You know, as a scientist, anytime we are able to accomplish something that we only really dreamed about previously, it's super exciting. Receiving the Bayer Foundation's Early Excellence in Science Award is really exciting, uh, not just for me, but for my whole group, really. It's a huge vote of confidence as we try to push our vision of what the future of chemistry looks like. So this research, I think, is important in the long run because you know, every new medicine that we want to bring to market really requires a lengthy discovery process. And the faster that we make that, the, the bigger impact we can have on society. Those new molecules that are going to change the world are going to be found faster if we have better tools to, to find them in the first place. I think one of the best things about the Bayer Foundation Science Awards is that it's a pot of money that comes with no strings attached. One of the things about modern uh, grant funding, especially in the United States, is that it's often tied to notions of feasibility on short time scales. There's all sorts of budgeting and reporting requirements, and being freed from all of those really gives us the license to dream big for the future. I don't think I can pick a single wish for 2023, but one of the cool things about my research program is it's very easy to write down a list of, of wish list reactions, things that we currently can't do, but that if we could would really be transformational. And there's a few in my lab that are, are just really close, and I, I'm looking forward to um, uh, you know, breakthroughs in the next year. I work searching for new tools that allow scientists now and in the future to better and faster fight cancer and other infectious diseases. 
since the early years of my scientific career, I had the opportunity to join an amazing team of scientists and also joining forces with the Cuban biotechnology industry. This work is important because of the emergence of new infectious diseases all the time and the necessity of unravel uh, new therapeutic targets. I chose to work um, in this research field because of the opportunity of collaborating, networking and also learning uh, from different scientific uh, scenarios. The Bayer Foundation Science Awards uh, strive to honor outstanding scientific achievements and this means to me a great recognition to my work and the opportunity to broaden its visibility also represents uh, a great support for my future scientific career. If I had a wish for 2023, that would be starting my career as independent researcher and starting to form my own uh, team of researchers. Should we give them a first round of applause? All right. All right, so it is time for us to present these awards um, to these amazing, outstanding scientists. If I can just pull up my notes for a minute. All right. Excuse me for a minute. Okay. All right. So the first award, early. Excellence in Science Award in Biology goes to Dr. Claudia Bonfio from the University of Strasbourg, France, for her landmark achievement in the field of prebiotic synthesis of biomolecules capable of self-assembly and thereby a biochemical systems approach towards the in vitro assembly of advanced primitive cells like stem cells. Dr. Claudia Bonfio, please. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So. There you go. Thanks. We, we have to do these pictures, right? So <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. Now, the early science and science award for chemistry goes to Dr. Mark Levin, University of Chicago in the US for his path-breaking research on skeletal rearrangements in complex chemical compounds using a wide range of chemical modalities, enabling the re-evaluation of existing compound libraries to discover new medical drug. Dr. Levin. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. There you go. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Um, for the Early Science Award in Medicine goes to Dr. Yanira Mendez Gomez from University of Cambridge in the UK for her pioneering utilization of multi-component reactions, allowing the assembly of highly complex biocongulant conjugates like multivalent antibacterial vaccine or antibody drug conjugates, constituting a great contribution to vaccine production. Dr. Mendez Gomez. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. There we go. I know. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. And not, last but not least, the Excellence Award in Data Science to Dr. Mohamed Lot Falahi from the Helm. Now, okay, my German is not great, okay? So, Helmholtz Institute of Computational Biology in, Mon in Munich, Germany for his innovative development of machine learning algorithms in the context of computational biology towards the understanding of large-scale single-cell omic data in health and disease, 
ultimately, the ultimately enabling precision medicine and AI-assisted drug discovery. Dr. Notfalai. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Excellent. Now, we have asked these scientists to stay on stage for a few minutes. So we can ask them how they feel <laughs> about winning the award, as well as maybe just a few questions. Um, so maybe we'll start with that. How do you feel about winning this award? What does award mean for you? I don't <laughs> want to be the first one. <laughs> so Anybody? Dr. Levin. Uh, overwhelmed and a little bit jet lagged. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. But you mentioned in the, in the, in the video a little bit. Yeah. Maybe share with us, what's your aspiration with this award? You know, um, that the thing that I, I love most about this, right, is that, like, I'm not, I don't have to promise to solve anything in particular. And, and you know, that may sound a little bit funny, but actually in science, that's super useful. Because oftentimes, you go off and you try to do one thing in particular, and you end up finding something much more exciting. Mm. And then you suddenly have to turn around and tell the grant agencies, like, look, I know I said I was going to do this. But, and and um, <laughs> that's the best thing about this award, right, is it's just a vote of confidence in my program and in my ability to solve problems, right? It's a really wonderful thing. But we do want to see outcomes, right? Yes, yes. No, they'll all be good. <laughs> well, I, would never switch, I would never switch gears to something worse, right? <laughs> congratulations. No, congratulations. Dr. Bonfio, um, you talked a little bit also in your video yeah, about your aspirations. And maybe share with us a little bit. How did you get into this field? What excites you the most about your research work? Yeah, so I guess, um, as I mentioned in the video, um, I've always worked on origin of life research, and uh, it's something that I find um, incredibly interesting because there's so many unknowns. Uh, but I also see how studying something that seems so far away from you know, getting to the answers yeah. uh, is, could be really useful and advantageous also for more applicative research. Um, when we think about synthetic biology, artificial cells, uh, this is all something that, um, for which we can find answers in the kind of research that I do. And so I see a very strong connection between fundamental science and what we do and what can come out of that. Yeah, that's fantastic. We look forward to seeing your achievements there. Now, Dr. Gomez, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges for young scientists like yourself <laughs> in the field you do? Well, in the stage I'm, I'm right now, yeah. what is like becoming independent, I, I think, I believe it's really sh challenging, yeah. uh, like to move forward and um, kind of translate the way we think, uh, the way we like to do uh, science. Uh, I think it's um, really rewarding uh, because I work um, more re in, in a field more related to chemical immunology, translated to cancer research and infectious diseases. And I, I, I do believe that connection between academy and industry in this uh, type of research yeah. is uh, really important. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. What about uh, Dr. Lot? I have to pronounce your name accurately. Um, Lot Falahi. Lot Falahi. Dr. Lot Falahi. Maybe share with us, you know, data computer science, stational science obviously is one I think that cuts across right, many of these foundational life sciences. Mm -hmm. So what's your vision? Where should this be two years from now, five years from now? Um, I think we're kind of like in a uh, breakthrough at the moment with, with AI and machine learning and it's getting more and more integrated in almost everything and now we're also seeing um, such phenomena also in, in biology health. So I think a few years, um, a lot of like decision makings that um, we're having in terms of both clinicians, biologists that could be um, not replaced by AI, but assisted by AI, I would mm. say, because the sometimes it brings panic. But like, um, <laughs> <laughs> but that that's basically um, what we're seeing, and we basically saw that with like um, AlphaFold. It has basically changed the whole protein structure prediction, moving from like experimental biology to kind of just like pressing it button and yeah. then getting a structure for the protein, yeah. So chat GPT is a good or a bad thing? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's a good one if it, if it can kind of like 
you know, like prescribed medicine and all the stuff. I think they were yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not like rephrasing stuff. I think. I'll tell you, my uh, my my daughter in high school is very excited about ChatGPT. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> mm, exactly, exactly. Now, here's a question to all four of you. Right, you won this award because of your excellence in research. What is the one thing you would like to share with all the audience, not just the ones here, but also for future generations? What does meaning a war like this mean for you? And what is one advice to them? Who wants to start? <laughs> <laughs> OK, Dr. Levin. Uh, me again, OK. <laughs> well, um, Man, okay, so, y you know, I guess this is so cheesy, but, like, you just got to go for what you think is the most important problem, right? Yeah. Like, there's no point in in trying to do something that you think is going to be easier and less exciting. You just got to go for what you think is the most exciting thing you can do. Go for what, what excites you. Yeah. yeah Absolutely. Yeah. Dr. Bonfio. Yeah, so I would say um, that I've realized how important doing research uh, at the interface between different disciplines is not only important, but also gives back a lot. Mm -hmm. You get to learn a lot, and you uh, find answers to problems that you would have not been able to solve uh, alone, let's say. So I think my w advice would be to explore um, and go beyond your comfort zone and try to uh, expand your knowledge and interact with people that come from different fields because this is going to bring much more success uh, than if you were not going to do that. So well, do what you love, go explore and connect with people outside of your own comfort zone. Perfect. Dr. Gomez. I, I completely agree. I think going interdiscipl interdisciplinary and uh, networking and so kind of um, opening to new ideas, uh, to new collaborations, I think is really important at, at this stage of our careers. Excellent, sounds good. Dr. Lofaladi. Um, so I think like thinking out of the box and a lot of like um, cool things that we would I definitely agree. And uh, just like for the people who are kind of like, so I come from like, um, I come from Iran. So a lot of people are actually in, in other regions in the world are not really, they don't have, I mean, um, equal access to education. So also for those people um, to dream big and then um, it's definitely achievable and um, just needs like a bit of push, but like, yeah. So dream big, fall outside your field and continue to challenge yourself to think outside of the box. I think that's a pretty good summary of uh, what these scientists represent. So please join me in thanking them and congratulate them again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.